affects hurricanes is the differences in sea surface temperatures that occur over longer time scales on the order of decades. And there is a climatological variability to the North Atlantic Ocean, just like there's a climatological variability that occurs in the Pacific Ocean, that enhances hurricane formation during certain periods of time or certain decades versus others. And in the year 2001, um, year 2000, we entered, actually 1996, I should read my own slide, we entered a warm regime in the North Atlantic that's now generating more hurricanes and will continue to generate more hurricanes for the next decade or two than the previous periods. North Atlantic sea surface temperatures, as it says here, have colder than average periods that we call cold regimes and warmer than average periods that we call warm regimes and these cold and warm cycles change over the periods of decades or what we call a multi-decadal change or a multi-decadal cycle. So when the North Atlantic Ocean is warmer than usual, we're going to get more hurricanes. When the North Atlantic Ocean is colder than usual, we're going to get less hurricanes. So cold regimes less, warm regimes more, and we're currently in a warm regime in the North Atlantic Ocean. And so meteorologists, climatologists, hurricaneologists have been predicting more hurricanes for the next couple decades as a result of that. And we can look at the data and see that. From 1900 to 1925, there were fewer than normal hurricanes, even though we had one of the worst hurricanes in the year 1900. 1970 to 1994 was also a period of much less hurricanes. 1926 to 1929, this is the area of uh, the time of that uh, Lake Okeechobee hurricane, and 1996 to present, which has seen some of the costliest hurricanes ever, although we had Hurricane Andrew in 1992, have brought more frequent and more intense hurricanes. So remember, these are averages. So Hurricane Andrew 1992 happened in the middle of a cold regime doesn't mean nothing bad can happen. It just means on average we're going to have more or less hurricanes. It gives us some predictive capability. But again, that's a climate variable, a long-term variable, not something that's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen on any one given day. But it's that variability that causes these periods of intense or less intense hurricanes. And again, global warming is going to come into this as well. You've probably seen the debate between whether more hurricanes and global warming or no effect of global warming. And it's complicated because sea surface temperatures aren't the only thing that rule when, how often, and how intense hurricanes are. There's some evidence of increasing intensity, increasing amounts of energy in hurricanes as a result of global warming. So when a hurricane forms, it seems to be more intense. Those hurricanes seem to last longer because the ocean is warmer, and that makes sense. But global warming also alters wind patterns, and it may be that increases in winds, particularly winds aloft, shifts in pressure systems, shifts in the Bermuda High in particular, may actually cause hurricanes, make hurricanes harder to produce or harder to generate, or those winds may tear apart hurricanes before they get formed. So there's a couple different things happening as a result of global warming, and it's not clear yet which one will win out. Will it be sea surface temperatures, or will it be wind patterns? And so right now, when you look at the scientific data concerning global warming and hurricanes, it's unclear whether, whether global warming is going to cause more and more intense hurricanes, or more intense hurricanes, or whether global warming is going to, because of changes in wind patterns, somehow reduce the frequency or reduce the intensity of hurricanes. So we have to stay tuned on that one.